My name is Jan Klauber. I'm working at DigitalOcean in the kernel and performance team. And I would like to briefly talk about what we are doing for IO latency monitoring. So we are a cloud provider. We do have a fleet of servers um, with lots of VMs running QMU and KVM. And we need to continuously monitor um, performance data for internal and external use. We do get a lot of metrics per virtual machine for CPU, memory, I.O. network, and uh, much more. And we use Prometheus and Gravana to store and retrieve the data. One area where we wanted to improve ourselves was measuring of local storage. <clears throat> we only had per disk latency per machine, so we didn't have any per VM data. We didn't have um, data for read write operations and also latency is influenced by many factors, uh, for instance, by block size or by number of IO operations. So basically we wanted to monitor and track every single IO request. That's where BBF came into play. Uh, it was already used heavily for tracing. So I thought it would be a good match. Um, now we had a number of questions at the beginning. One thing is we have a complex disk setup with RAID, DM, um, LVM. So which layer should we trace on? Should we trace requests or block IOs? Um, luckily, there are trace points already in the IO path. So should we use trace points or raw trace points or rather stick to K-probes? Also for user space tooling, we are bound to Golang because of our middleware stack. So we needed to uh, decide which library to use where and also what's the performance overhead of BBF? What would it mean? We already knew that we couldn't monitor every single IO event, but had to kind of aggregate inside the kernel. <laughs> so I played around with um, different options we had and finally decided on using raw trace points on block IO layer. That was <clears throat> um, good for us because um, tracing the block IO struct, we can do a lot of filtering. So we I filter out every disk I'm not interested in. We can filter out processes we are not interested in. So this is a short snippet of the trace points we are using. The actual code is quite longer. <clears throat> and with this in place, it was quite easy to implement the whole thing. So at the bottom, we have the VMs. And as we have the IO path instrumented, whenever a VM does IO, we atomically increase the counters we are interested in. Uh, the counters you can see in the BBF maps part for read and write operations for bandwidth and IOPS and other things. And where the simple hash map indexed by the process PID. And then on the left side, we do have a user space component that tracks all the active VMs. From time to time, it gathers the data from the BBF hash tables. And it also has to do householding because VMs come and go. So from time to time, we need to remove inactive VMs to not fully utilize the, the BBF maps. And uh, when we can create histograms or P90 or whatever from the data we have and um, export it on a local port, so it can be retrieved. <clears throat> so to summarize, as I already said, we do tracing on block IO layer. We use raw trace points. We uh, decided to use Cilium eBBF, which worked greatly. <clears throat> we measured that the performance overhead is quite low using BBF stats. We do have a possibility for custom filters and it's easy to extend the BBF code. And it's also faster than parsing ProcFS. <clears throat> so what's open? Every project's got a to-do list. And um, the biggest pain point for us is kernel versioning support currently. We had to ship multiple BBF programs um, matching the kernel versions we are using. So that's something we need to work on. Another thing is we had to extend um, BBF code to have kind of versioning between our user space component and BBF because the data structures um, can differ. 
uh, we need to make sure it works even after an upgrade and there's more to do like dynamic map sizing which we didn't yet look into so thanks for your attention um, i would love to hear your feedback or comments <laughs>